best in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. Big women, big girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Catherine Gray. Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. And as you know, we are all about funding women. And today we have on a very special guest who is great about finding funding for women produced and directed movies and female driven content. How much do we love that? Please work, welcome to the show, B.D. Ganell. Hi, B.D. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited to talk about your new fund, which we're going to talk about later in the show. But it's a fund you're developing where you live in Louisville, Kentucky, um, coming live from there today, uh, that's going to help women producers, directors, uh, with female driven content to get funding. I am super excited to talk about that. And I'm sure our listeners are going to want to know, you know, how they can get involved. So we are going to talk about that later in the show. First, I want them to get to know you and how amazing you are. Um, I was so lucky to be introduced to you through women in media. Yes. And for those that don't know what women in media is, women with an N and then media, that's how you can find them. Uh, it's a directory of all women uh, in production above and below the line. And our She Angels Foundation gave them a grant because they do such incredible nonprofit work. Um, and it used to be in Hollywood and, and, and uh, you know, television and film, as you know, from living here in L.A. for so many years. Um, it, it, you know, these television production companies would say, well, we would hire women, but we can't find any. And so women in media was like the answer to that, that directory that says, oh, no, you can't say that anymore because you can get below the line, like gaffers, sound people, so forth. And we have producers, directors, all women in our directory for the films that you're making. So no excuses anymore, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we were so lucky that they had recommended you for our line producer on our upcoming TV series we're working on. Super excited about that. We'll be telling folks about that in the near future. But for today, uh, we're just going to talk about um, projects that you're working on that I'm super excited about. Now, you had shared with me that uh, you were actually born in uh, Tennessee. That is correct. Right. And so tell me a little bit about your journey to how you uh, were in L.A., how you ended up in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, especially as a filmmaker. That's kind of an unusual location. So I want to talk about that. You know, it's funny because I moved to California with no intent to be in the film industry whatsoever. And I actually met my partner who has wanted to be a director his whole life. And he, when I was uh, in, I was in medicine, I had been in nursing school and I was shifting pre-med uh, and working at the hospital. I wasn't liking the fact that it was so financially driven. And I knew if I stayed a part of it, I was probably going to try to fight that system. And I knew that that was not my path in this lifetime. And so uh, when I sat down with my partner, I was like, I don't know what to do. This is where I've been forever. And he's like, well, you've always done makeup on my projects and shorts and things, and you're really good at it. So why don't you do that? And that was my intro into the film industry. I started as a makeup artist. Ironically, the first movie I ever worked on, I was promoted to line producer because I started asking questions about the budget and how much they'd spent, who was doing their payroll and tracking expenses. And I ended up getting that job for free because uh, I wasn't being paid on that movie. Uh, and then went right back to makeup because that's what I thought I wanted to do. And after the crash in 2008 was really when I did the shift and, and started producing and working on my own content. Um, and I started really small. I started in like the 20,000, 45,000, very, very small and built my way up and, and got a reputation as a line producer, uh, again, running budgets and schedules and, and, and the money side of it. Uh, and when I started get working on bigger and bigger films, you know, this industry is industry interesting because it, there are so many different types. It takes all different types. And, 
you know, my world of I want to be able to control what happens on set was what pushed me into producing out of line producing. But the shift to Kentucky was funny because I got a call from a good friend of mine that said, I need you to cover for me. I can't do this movie. And I said, well, what is it? He goes, it's this little movie in Louisville, Kentucky. And I said, why Kentucky? Like that was my first response. And he says, well, they have a really great tax credit. Well, when, when you, uh, when I met you and you're like, I'm in Kentucky, I'm like, Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I did my first movie here. And then after I met the crew and many of the vendors and everybody, I was referred to a company that was coming in to do a bunch of Lifetime and Hallmark type movies. And so then I got on board with them and did a whole bunch more movies with them. And so it just made sense since I was never home to get a place here and stay here. And it, you know, my, my partner and my son are both born and raised in Southern California. So moving them to the Midwest, you know, I grew up just outside of Indianapolis. So this is only about two hours from my home uh, where my family lives, but it was really funny moving them here because this was very new for them. And we live really far out in the country and there's cows and horses and chickens. And it's just really fun to learn all of it again through their eyes. Cause I grew up on a farm. So I just, just, just like going back home for me, but for them, it's every day is something new. Listen, I sidetrack, but I just read something about some statistic that there's some huge amount of people that have never seen a cow. Like yeah. I'm like, really? That's interesting. But I guess a lot of people grow up in cities and mm -hmm. they never do see uh, farms or cows or whatever. So that was interesting. If you don't um, make it a point to go to the fairs, then you don't see them because that's in California. You can still see them if you go to the county fair, but that's it. That's the only that's place. about it. Yeah. Um, and so you had shared with me that you grew up with your dad in the military. So you moved a lot. Yes. Yeah. And so I think when you move a lot, um, it does make you more resilient uh, and, and, forces you to be personable in situations that you um, are put in because you're constantly having, I'm sure, to make new friends. And, and so I bet that bodes well for being a producer because let's face it, raising money is not easy, but I know you have a gift and you have a perfect personality for it. And, you know, when you told me you had originally been pre-med, I'm like, ah, no wonder she's so smart. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's it def the moving definitely helped because as a child, when you're moved around a lot, you have to you have no choice. You have to go make right. new friends. And then, you know, it just it forced me because from the time I was five, well, from the time I was born till the time I was about 12, I had been in about five or six different schools. And so you have no choice. You have to make new friends. And especially right. back then before the Internet was big. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, so I can imagine that that bodes well for being a producer. So here you are, you're working in hospitals, you shared with me. It wasn't feeding your soul. Uh, you go over and think you're going to be doing makeup, and here you are raising millions of dollars for movies. I mean, what a transition, but I love how it just kind of happened organically that you were drawn to that, asking all the questions. I could see that about you because you're um, a very curious person, great conversationalist. And I could see how, you know, you would dig a little deeper. Well, how did you do this? And how'd you do that? One of the other things I love you shared about was that you're on these film sets and you're looking at the budgets and how they're running them. And you're thinking, I could do this better. <laughs> yes. And I think yes. a lot of women, women feel that way. I don't know if it was men that you were working with, but I'm just saying uh, women um, have these gifts and haven't been given these opportunities, but I'm so glad you just kind of took the bull by the horns and, and started raising money for films. And I know you shared your first one was like 20,000, but now you've raised up to 5 million. So there you go. It's definitely a gift. It is. I, you know, what's funny is it's all perception. Because I remember when I very first started, and, and 20000 wasn't that much money, but I remember having the conversation of, I can't ask for a million dollars because I couldn't even wrap my mind around what a million dollars was. And and I, I just remember having that little hang up and, and my partner saying, you will get over that. Like, just keep building your way up. And so that's what I did. And it was a few hundred thousand, then it was half a million dollars. And it's all the perspective. If you say you have $500,000, that's one perspective. If you say you have a half a million dollars, you're like, oh, I'm halfway there. You know, and it's a different perspective. And then 
once you can raise a million dollars, I feel like at that point it gets easier just because the people you deal with deal in larger numbers at that point. And it's just a matter of, of the mitigating the risk because, you know, film is high risk. And so you, you have to be really good at coming up with that strategy that really mitigates as much risk as you can. I mean, we can, obviously can't mitigate everything. COVID screwed a whole bunch of people up. Uh, but it's it's one of those things where we do everything we can to try to make it as profitable as it can be because I want those people to invest again. I want them to make their money back plus some and then go, here, take it back and do it again. Yeah, I have another friend in this business that raises really huge amounts of money. And um, I agree with you that if you really know what you're doing and you have really vetted everything in that project, it's not as risky as most people think of investing in movies, although many movies are not run well and are a huge risk. But, you know, get behind someone like yourself that has integrity and smart and, you know, already knows it's going to be distributed or how it's going to be picked up or who's, um, uh, you know, who's the bond people or whatever, you know, who, who's involved, who's the director, are they reputable, are they dependable, you know, all of these things. Um, but it's very exciting. And and I have heard exactly what you said that some people say, you know, it's just as hard to raise uh, 500,000 as it is to raise 5 million or 15 million. It's all perspective. It really is perspective. And I think most people listening uh, are thinking the same thing that, that you just said. They're thinking, wow, how do you raise a million dollars? How do you raise $5 million? But it is just believing that not a big deal and that there are people out there willing to invest in really great movies. People love movies and a lot of people want to invest in them, especially if they feel they can count on the people putting it together that it does mitigate their risk. And so I'd like to... I, I think that, you know, you would fall into that category. Yeah, it's it's funny because the the investors are as diverse as the content that we make. And so what the biggest thing you're trying to do is find somebody who's not only excited about film, but maybe has a special place about the content that you're doing. If, if the story is exciting, if the subject matter, if the genre, you know, if it's something that they're just like, I want to be a part of this, you can get them excited. And of course, there's perks, you know, coming to set, going to premieres, getting to meet, you know, talent, there's things like that. But it's also, I don't think people think about this, that movies create immortality. Because think about the movies that were made in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s that still exist today. So if you wanted to sit down and watch a silent movie from the 20s, or if you wanted to sit down and watch a musical from the 40s, all those names in the credits still are, they exist somewhere in reality so those people have been immortalized by those movies and i think there's a there's an important piece to that yes and i agree with you i do think that is why people invest in movies i think they want to leave it as a legacy uh if it's something they really believe in a story that needs to be told um, I know you and I had just talked about one uh, that's the Lily Ledbetter story. Yes. Uh, who, you know, she helped create the Equal Pay Act through Obama. Wonderful story that needs to be told. I love that there's so many, especially women that want to get behind that um, because it is a story and it's a piece of history that needs to be told. And I think someone that's going to invest in that is going to say, this is a piece of history that needs to be told. And I want that to be my legacy that I help to tell it. And like you said, and plus all the perks of getting to go and be on the red carpet and meet the people involved. And, you know, uh, that's exciting too. But I think the real thing that drives people is, uh, like you said, leaving leaving a, a footprint uh, when we leave here. You know, I um, feel like I was born with film DNA in, in me. I mean, I just am such a lover of, of film. I believe it really changes and impacts culture. I believe that that is what shapes our culture um, it, because you use films and stories to educate people and inspire them about things they otherwise might ha not have even known about. Um, there's another thing I love about documentaries. You know, every time I see a documentary, I think, wow, if that filmmaker hadn't made that, I wouldn't even know about this. You know, right. I, I just find it fascinating. I, I love filmmaking. And like you said, you can, with photography and film, you can capture a moment in history forever. And yeah. to me, that's pure magic. Yeah, I agree with that completely. So you all are starting a fund in Kentucky, of all places. I love the story. And it's called um, Empowered 
entertainment. So empoweredent.com. And you're just getting it off the ground. And uh, by the time this airs, I think it'll be rocking and rolling. And this is to raise money for uh, films that are produced and directed by women and are female content driven. Yes, that is correct. And we're we're fo- and we're not our complete focus is not on female investors, but that is one of our directions that we're looking for. Because I think there's a lot of women who want to be a part of film and maybe don't know how to do it or haven't been put in the right direction or, or the right path for it. And that we want to create that path. And, and we actually kind of have two venues that we're doing for it. One side is the accredited investor that can come in for the much higher amounts of money. And then we are actually working with WeFunder to create a, a second path for the non-accredited investors who maybe have you know five or ten or twenty thousand dollars that they want to help here or there. Because not every movie is going to be a five to ten million dollar movie. We have some smaller movies as well. Um, and we have some really amazing content already, you know, re- lined up, ready to go from from you know, unique perspectives, unique voices, personal stories, um, some first time directors that are telling their story that, you know, we're really excited to get behind. And we want to give that avenue for for women, for our advocates, because it doesn't just have to be women. If there's men out there that want to be advocates, then we're happy to have them too, because the advocates are what are going to help continue to push this change. And that's really what we're pushing for. Right. Yeah. You're not turning down the money from men, but we would like to see more women invest. Yes. And I love that message because, you know, I'm all about that. And, you know, you're so right. Uh, Let's say you are a woman that would like to invest in something. Why not a film that's going to make a difference and perhaps you're not a producer or director or writer or actor or whatever would be involved in a film. This is your way to participate in the filmmaking. Very exciting. Yeah, um, we, we're, what we're saying right now is on the path to equality, we don't want to forget about equity. You know, the equity is as important as the as the quality. And and that's really what we're trying to create here is an, an equity space for investors who want to be a part of film. Right. And as you and I have discussed, uh, whether it's filmmaking or whatever uh, vertical, uh, we don't have enough women investors. And we really are focused on how do we get more women to think about investing? They all invest in stocks or bonds or uh, real estate, but it really is important for them to invest in other women. Uh, It is one reason that uh, it's such an unlevel playing field, not only in filmmaking, but in every vertical. We are underfunded. Most people know we get less than 2% of venture capital. That means men get 98%. Let me repeat yeah. that. <laughs> men get 98%. And I bet that flows over to the film world. And so the only way we're going to change that is if you, the listeners, you know, decide, hey, I'm going to go on WeFunder and get behind this fund, uh, the entertain- the Empowered Entertainment Fund. It's empoweredent.com. Check it out and say, how can I participate in this fund to help women make films? Um, and of course, um, on WeFunder, they have uh, film projects that people can get behind. And for those that don't know what WeFunder is, uh, it's equity crowdfunding. You can put in $100 if you want it to. It's a doesn't require a lot of money. So it's worth checking that out and saying, how could I participate in this? If I don't have a half a million dollars or even $5,000, you can. And so that's worth uh, looking into and something I wanted to bring up today, that access. But why is it important for women to invest? The content that's put out there is typically green lighted by men, funded by men, Uh, written, produced by men. I mean, the majority of it is. And so if we want more female driven content, it's going to have to be funded by more women. And, you know, people tend to invest in things they identify with. And so, you know, whether it be Lily Ledbetter movie or whatever movie we're talking about, that's female content driven, women are going to need to get behind it because a lot of times the men won't get behind those type of films. They don't think anybody wants to see them, but us, the women, we do, we do want these films. Now, one film I want to talk about is your first project with this fund that we're talking yes. about because it's a mutual friend. I introduced you all and now you're working together and I just love her to pieces, which is Brittany Sarkissian 
uh, AKA as a writer, Brittany Logan. And she's got this great movie that's going to be your first film project with the fund. And can we talk about it for a minute? Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I love this project. Yeah. It's called, uh, it's called Allie Mitchell must win. And it's actually a musical in the vein of like high school musical or, you know, kind of like bring it on or one of those kind of high school based stories. And it's actually based on a true story for Brittany, where when she was in high school, her school actually did they put on skits at homecoming. I know not every school does this. Mine didn't. This was a new concept for me, but I've talked to other people and they're like, yeah, we did this too. So somehow we missed out, but they would put on skits. Each class would do a skit and then they would be voted on. And the one that got the most votes would win. So when Brittany was a freshman, she ran the group that did their skit and they won. And then the following year she ran it and they won as sophomores and then they won again as juniors. And what ended up happening was no class had ever won all four years. And so she was bound and determined to win that fourth year. And, and I don't want to break, I don't want to uh, bust the end of it because I want everybody to come see it, but uh, it ends up being this really wonderful story of overcoming adversity and, and being that go-getter, you know, for those of us in high school that were that, that woman, that girl that was the go-getter that everybody was just like, whoa, slow down, you know, and trying to keep us in our place. And we were just like, no, I'm going to make this happen. It's what it's going to be. You know, this is that story. And we have wonderful music that it's set to and our, our, um, uh, music producers and lyricists are, are just amazing. Uh, we have a wonderful choreographer on board and Brittany's actually directing it. This is her directorial debut, but she's been in the industry for so long and she has such a specific vision on it that I am extremely confident in her as a director. And we're making sure that we're surrounding her with just A-list talent as we can, both in the cast and in the crew and what we can do to really make this a success. So this is the kind of thing that somebody could jump on empoweredent.com -E and get behind yes, and, and put money behind because this is exciting. It's a great story. I have to confess, I have known Brittany for more than 20 years. I went to her high school performances. She is extraordinary. I remember her mother telling me, oh, you have to come see my kid. She's really talented. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure she is, like every mother thinks. And then I went and I was so blown away. I was like, oh my God, your kid is so talented. And then I found out not only does she you know, act and dance, but she writes, she choreographs, she directs. The kid is amazing. And so anybody that would get behind her and this project, and, and your fund, uh, they would have a great investment and a great time. Uh, you know, what, a, what an excellent uh, first project that you guys are doing. I love it. Love and it. we want to shoot, we're planning on shooting it here in Louisville just because we want to, I'm really big about supporting Midwest film because I grew up in a world where be, working in the film industry wasn't a job. Like I remember when my partner said, I'm going to be a director. Like, that's not a real job because where I grew up, if you wanted to be in media, you were a broadcast, you know, you were a journalist, you were uh, on news, you were on the radio, but you didn't necessarily work in film. And so this concept of being able to have a, a career in this industry wasn't a real thing. And I am really excited to be a part of that transition in the Midwest to explain to these kids coming up through school, this is an, a, an avenue that you can have as an artist. And so that's where that's our big focus and bringing it to Louisville and, and bringing in the talent here is wonderful schools we're talking to to be a part of it. So we're really excited. I love that. I love that you're doing that because filmmaking should be accessible to kids and all people of all ages and all ethnicities all around the country. So I love, you know, pulling it out of just L.A., New York, Miami, you know, the, the, the regular places and doing it in the Midwest. I think that's very exciting. And I love that you're creating that fund there. I mean, I think that is just genius and wonderful. Um, I'm excited to drive people to it and help you build that. And um, if it's OK, no. Catherine, I do want to mention my partner in Empowered Entertainment because I don't sure. want her to be missed. Her name is Heather Bouvier, and she's a, a Southern Indiana, Kentucky native as well. And what's funny is her and I met two, three years ago when I first got here and we met for coffee just to talk and say, hey, you know, what can we do for each other? We ended up talking for almost four hours and just you just knew it was the beginning of something special. And so as I started putting this together and I had all my projects that were almost all female based, female led content, I was she goes, hey, 
let's 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 tap in here there's so much money here and so she has been my conduit to a lot of the money here and she's really just running with it and i'm really happy to have her as part of the team and us doing this together and i just i wanted to give a shout out to her because i it's it's not all just me she really truly is an amazing partner to have i love it louisville's not just the derby anymore no it's not <laughs> So filmmaking in Kentucky, I love it. Uh, it's a great topic today. I'm sure it has enlightened a lot of people that didn't know about this. Very exciting. Um, how can people find you besides the website? Uh, what's your social? Uh, so I'm on Instagram. I'm super easy to find because my name is so unique. Uh, you can just literally search BD, all the letters together, space Ganell, G-U-N-N-E-L-L. -L. And I am on Instagram, I am on LinkedIn, I am on Facebook, I am on Twitter. I will say I don't tweet as much as probably other people do. But I, I definitely uh, Instagram is probably the best way to get a hold of me at this moment because that's really the one I'm focusing on. Great. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. Um, well, I hope people reach out to you. I hope they visit empoweredent.com and help give to the fund that's going to fund producers and uh, uh, directors that are women with female driven content. Very exciting. So proud of you. Happy we're working together in so many capacities. Uh, everybody remember, of course, to also follow She Angels Investors and She Angels Foundation and make it a great day. And remember to invest in her. You can be an investor. Make it a great day, you guys. Thanks so much, BD. Take care. Thank you, Catherine. Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tomasic.